Hi there, this is Megan Mitchell with Agents of Change Social Work Test Prep. And I'm here today to bring you an updated social work shorts on the stages of change. This is a really important topic because many times when we're working with clients, they may be committed to making a change. They may want to change a behavior or an attitude. And this will be really a good framework to help our clients work from. If you have any questions about the program or are looking for more information, you can check us out at our website, agentsofchangeprep.com. So what are the stages of change? You might have heard of it just referred to as the stages of change, but it actually comes from a framework and that is the trans theoretical model. And like I said, it's a framework to help us understand the process in which we can change behavior. The stages, there's five stages of change within this model, and they are, as you can see here, we start with pre-contemplation, then contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. And today we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into each of these different stages, what it means for the client and what it means for the clinician. For visual learners, I have a visual here, and I really like this visual because it shows an entry point for behavior change and an exit point, but it also shows the, the different steps as a wheel, knowing that it is not linear and there might be different times in the behavior change process that people are in different stages. So why is this information important, why should clinicians and social workers know about the stages of change, and why will this be important for our clients? Behavior change does not happen overnight. For example, say you are trying to limit screen time in your evenings before bed. So maybe um, you want to put the phone away and hope that that will help fall asleep and stay asleep you're probably not going to just be able to do that if this is a behavior that you've been doing for some time. You're probably not gonna be able to just put the phone down and change in one day, right? Because behavior change is a process. So it will be really important for you to provide psychoeducation to your clients on the process. You might even want to show them this visual to see that it has a lot of different steps before the behavior becomes maintained. And relapse is a part of this process too, and it's a normal part of the process. So I really like this visual. I think that it helps clients buy in more because oftentimes they think I wanna make a change and they get very frustrated, but they might not know the different steps that are involved in the process. And where the client is in the process affects how we're going to interact with them. So we're gonna start here with pre-contemplation. And what I like about this visual is it's not even in the wheel of change. Pre-contemplation is they're not ready to make a change yet. They're not even thinking about making a change. From pre-contemplation, um, you jump into contemplation and this is maybe thinking that there is something that they want to change or an area of their life that may be problematic or needs some sort of modification. From there, you move into preparation, and this would be starting to plan for the behavior change. You're thinking that this is something you do want to move forward with, and you're thinking of the steps that it will take to make the change. Next is action. This is actually doing whatever is needed to make the change and committing to it. You are making the change in the action stage. Once you have been keeping up with the new behavior, you move into the maintenance stage. And this is when things start to become more ha habitual. You have started to make this part of your routine, this behavior change, and you're able to maintain the change. Um, we're not gonna move yet here to permanent exit because a lot of times there's a relapse. So maybe you slip up, maybe something happens, you, life happens, right? You get busy and you're not able to keep up the change that you had planned, right? Relapse is completely normal. We wanna normalize that for clients. And from there, we go back to the different stages in the wheel, right? From And like I said, it's not linear. So maybe we move back into the preparation or maybe we move back into the action. I like to say that we can permanently exit when it has become ingrained in our life, 
but knowing that if we permanently exit, we might need to re-enter the wheel if we relapse again. So I think this is really helpful to know where to meet clients, how to interact with them, and how to frame behavior change for them. So let's break down pre-contemplation. And remember that was before a client or ourselves even entered that, that wheel of change. So this is when someone's not ready or willing to change. People in the pre-contemplation stage do not intend to take action in the foreseeable future. So that's generally six months or so. So they have no interest in changing. They might be uninformed about the consequences of their behavior, or they might be having some defense mechanisms going on. They might have trauma that's blocking them, but they're not interested in even considering making a change. They might have had multiple unsuccessful attempts in the past, so they have that block too. They might feel demoralized. They might feel like they're not even capable of changing. So another aspect to look at is the client might be in denial that change is needed. Maybe family members are seeing some of their behaviors or actions that need to change, but the client might be in denial that they need to make a change. So pre-contemplation is they're not even really or committed to making any sort of change at this time. As clinicians, what should we do? We should engage with the client by educating them on the consequences that their behavior may have and do this in a non-judgmental way, right? We're just giving very much the facts at this point and helping the client focus on the pros and cons of changing the behavior, right? So you might say, here's the pros and cons, but the pros here might help you in this way. However, we do not want to force a client into change if that's not where they are. Our priority is not their priority. So it's important to meet the client where they are at and not push them into this cycle. And here you might just be doing a lot of sitting with the client, listening to what's going on for them, and really just understanding where some of those barriers may lie because it might be that they need to do some other work on underlying issues before they're willing to commit to change. So that's pre-contemplation. The next stage they've now entered the, the wheel of change is contemplation. They might be thinking about making a change. In this stage, people are planning to change maybe in the next six months, but they've not committed to taking a a action to change yet, right? So they're thinking about it. They're more open to the idea. And during this stage, the client may acknowledge their behavior is problematic, but they might be trying to solidify or work through their why of change. So they might be like, this is a problem, but why is this something that I want to change? So we'll go back to the example of um, reducing screen time before bed. You might think that, you know, this might be problematic, but I don't think it's a big enough problem that I need to change my behavior. I need to learn a little bit more before I commit to anything. So that would be someone in the contemplation phase. As a clinician, what can we do to help our clients? Talk about the pros and cons of changing the behavior. That's going to be a common theme through all of the stages of change. We just really want to lay out for the client what might be helpful about behavior change or what might be a drawback of changing the behavior. Get to the root cause of why the client wants to change because that's going to really help motivate them in the process. And when you're learning what their why is, you can develop a plan and set goals towards making change with them if they commit to making the change. So you want to build up their strengths. You want to build up their why. And this, like I said, it's a process. Everyone's going to be at different places at different times. And the pacing and timing of behavior change definitely definitely, definitely is very person dependent. So maybe you're thinking about the change, you want to know some more, but now you're a little bit farther in that process and you are prepared to make a change. That'd be the preparation phase. You're determined. You're like, I'm committed to reducing my screen time before bed. What do we have to do to make this happen? So in this stage, people are ready and determined to take action. They might start to take small steps towards changing their behavior, and they know that or believe that changing their behavior can lead to more productive and healthy choices. So they're bought in at this point, right? They're prepping for what they're going to do to make this behavior change stick, and they are planning to change. They see that they want to make a change, and they want to have more productive or healthy patterns of behavior. 
So what should we do as the clinician at this stage, preparation with our clients? Help them begin working towards their goals. So they want to change, they have a why, dig into that why and help them plan. So this might help them um, look at what this new process will look like, what behavior change will look like, and what will be needed to begin the change process, right? Is this, you need an accountability partner? Do you need resources for this? Um, how are they going to keep themselves accountable? There's a lot of things to, to decide at the preparation phase so that they can move into the next phase, which is action. And this is where that behavior change is actively taking place. They're actively changing the behavior. They're doing what they set out to do. So in this stage, people have recently changed their pay behavior, and this is defined within the last six months and intend to keep moving forward with this behavior change. So I've dramatically cut back my uh, at nighttime screen time. So I am now putting my phone away, I'm doing meditation, and I am not getting my phone out at nighttime. People might exhibit this action, this active change, by acquiring new habits. So maybe instead of being on my phone before bed, now I'm listening to a guided meditation, right? I've modified my behavior to something that's going to serve um, my goal in a more healthy, productive manner. So what should we do here for our clients? Help them track their progress. So we want to make sure that they are aware that progress is happening and we want to encourage them. We want to praise them, right? It's really hard to even get to the action stage. So help them stay committed, ask them their why, make sure they're staying committed and provide an support and encouragement. Help them see how this change is affecting or influencing their goals. So for example, the lessening screen time, might ask, you might ask them, how's your sleep been? How's your overall stress been? And if it is having a positive effect, letting them know if you keep engaging with this, you can still keep up those really healthy, positive results that you are seeking out to change in the first place. So with action, you keep up with the behavior, you move into the maintenance phase. So in this stage, people have sustained their behavior change for an extended period of time, usually more than six months, but it really depends on what change they're making. And they intend to keep this behavior change going forward. So now I've been cutting back on my screen time, my phone time, I'm doing my meditations, I'm sleeping better than I ever have. And I'm. this is now a lifestyle, right? I'm going to continue moving forward. So people in this stage are working to prevent relapse to those earlier stages because they have seen the positive effects of the behavior change and they want to continue to commit to have this be part of their lives. So they're keeping up the behavior that they have been working through. What should we do here as a clinician? Continue to provide that support and praise, right? We don't want people to forget about what hard work they put in or what a good job they're doing. So we want to praise and highlight how this change behavior is having a positive impact in their lives and how that now it is becoming part of their lifestyle. So we want to help them keep up and maintain this healthy and new behavior to the best of our ability. But if you've ever tried to start something right, it sometimes does not go as planned life happens, right? I've talked about this. We get busy, we get sick, a variety of different things. We relapse, we go back to our old pattern. So relapse is when the client's not continuing with that new behavior and we, we or they may be reverting back to previous behavior. I want to um, really point out here that we want to try to normalize relapse and not make it such a negative, shameful thing. This person might relapse for a short period of time or a more sustained period, right? It could be, oh, I had um, a bad week and I was on my phone, but I'm going to get back to my lesson screen time um, after a little bit, right? Like maybe I had an illness and I could not sleep, so I was on my phone, um, on social media, and now I have relapsed and I want to go back to that original behavior change. So several rounds of change and behavior modification may be needed for before long-term change is made. You might've heard people say, right? Like it takes many, many, many attempts or many, many days for something to stick. 
that's because change is hard. Behavior change is hard. So if a client does relapse, and I don't like to use the word relapse, if they do have a setback is what I like to say, right? Because we don't want to shame them. This is very normal. Relapse kind of has a negative connotation. We just want them to know that, you know, they can always start back, right? This does not mean that they're a bad person. Um, it just means this is part of the cycle of behavior change and it's normal. So what can we do as a clinician? We want to be really supportive. So help the client regroup and normalize the relapse, right? Re-educate the client on the cycle of change, discuss what led to the relapse, right? So maybe it was illness or maybe it was stress or maybe negative influences in their life and discuss how that affected their overall progress. Help the client see that they have the choice to get back on track but don't once again force them back into behavior change. Discourage them from using that all or nothing thinking and that shame. So I failed this time, so I will never be successful, right? It doesn't mean just because you had one setback that you're not going to be successful ever again. So we want a lot of clients might fall into this all or nothing thinking. So I failed, so I'll never be successful. We want to reframe that for them and really help them focus on the positives work from a strengths based approach. So here's a little mini quiz. Which stage of change is this client in? A client comes to you and says he finally wants to take the advice of his partner. He states that he has anger problems and is committed to changing so he can improve his relationship. What stage of change is this client in? What do you think? Wants to make a change, knows what the problem is, and is committed to making a change. He wants to come to therapy, right? That's also something important. He's coming to you and saying he wants to, to make a change on his anger and he's committed to changing. The correct answer would be preparation, right? He's not in the pre-contemplation. He definitely wants to change. He's aware of that. And he's not at contemplation because he is says he's ready to take action. So from there, he'd have to prepare to make the change. He's aware that his behavior is a problem. He wants to make a change. That's why he's coming to you as the clinician. There's no signs at this moment that he has a plan or an action that has been taken that would put him into the action phase. So together here as the clinician, you'd want to plan. You'd want to ask him what specifically he wants to target. Um, and how he would get into that action phase so he can start to change the behavior. So he is in the, he or she is in the preparations phase. How are you going to make this information stick? Use an example from your own professional life. You've probably at some point either professionally or personally worked with someone that's trying to make a change, or you might have something in your life that you're trying to change right now. Walk through these stages of change and make sure you know what happens at each stage, giving examples. Remember, knowledge is able to stick a lot more when you can make it personal and you can remember specific examples. Think of how you would support this client or if you are thinking of a personal thing, how you would like a clinician to help walk you through this cycle. So make it personal, that will help make it stick. If you are looking for more content, like I said before, check us out at agentsofchangeprep.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe. If you're listening to us on podcasts, make sure you follow us so that you can be alerted when we put out new content. If you have any questions, I'm always available to answer them. You can reach out to us at agentsofchangeprep at gmail.com. And I want to thank you for tuning in. Remember, this is a hard process, but you can do this. You can do hard things. And um, thank you for tuning in and good luck on your st study journey.